Hey, Regina here with Tarot and Time, and I'm here with the May Tarot and Astrology reading. And so we are in Taurus season. We are starting off the month with three planets in Taurus, um, very close together. We have the sun. It is Taurus season. We've got Mercury close by, also in the sign of Taurus. Um, we know it's in its retrograde period right now, so it's interesting the information that's coming up right now. And because this is all happening in this sign of value, uh, Venus sign, Taurus, this uh, really grounded, I think of Taurus as such like a sign of beauty, of uh, stability, and um, but I don't really think Taurus rushes into things. It kind of, it knows what's important. It takes the steps forward that it needs to. Sometimes it can be a little stubborn, but. So we have the sun close to Mercury. So there's a lot there about expressing, communicating, but keeping in mind that because it's Mercury retrograde, everything that we are discussing and uh, expressing at this time, we are gonna come back over that ground again. So you wanna be careful you know, this is not, the conversation is not finished. So we have Mercury retrograde going on until May 14th, and then we'll um, start to move out of it. But if you go back and watch the Mercury retrograde video, you will see that even after May 14th, we're going back over that ground. So fresh new information coming in. Now, a lot of what I saw when I was researching the month of May was that there is a lot of information coming in, okay? And some of this is stuff that we have been asking for and looking for, and um, it's going to start, we're going to receive it. And sometimes when we receive information, it isn't always like somebody just talking at you, right? It could be the way your body responds to something. It could also be, I always talk about like overhearing other people's conversations and all of a sudden getting a piece of information I was looking for. Right, um, we've been taught, we've been hosting a lot of psychic medium events with Janine um, and Jamili, and a lot of information has been coming through. And all this time, I've been taking to ponder this information that's coming through. Fairly powerful, really healing because again, this is Taurus season. This is about Venus. This is about self love and self care and self value. So that when you show up in your relationships with others, you know how to do this because you've been doing this for yourself, right? Um, putting your best foot forward, uh, thinking about your strengths, thinking about what you are doing to contribute into this world. Okay, so it's a really beautiful month. And by the, towards a little later in the month, we'll actually have four planets in Taurus because Jupiter will be joining, okay? So there's a lot of consolidated energy. When I look at a chart, you know, a chart's a wheel. And this month, and it was like this last month too, everything's kind of scrunched, okay? So it's gonna hit certain areas of your chart. Um, everybody's, where it lands and everybody's chart is different. But when you start to see, huh, wow, that's where that's happening in my chart, if things aren't gonna feel balanced, they're gonna feel very consolidated, okay? So you wanna learn what you're here to learn during that consolidated period. Now, one of the things I noticed when I was looking over the month is that there's a lot of, it's like constant back and forth squares, the moon squaring Mars or Venus, or the moon trining Mars and Venus. So a square is supposed to be that frictional aspect and a trine is considered like a positive aspect. So we're kind of bouncing back and forth. And then I was thinking, well, you know what? This is the month of the full Scorpio moon, one of my favorite full moons. So we have, so, so I'll tell you how it all blends together in my opinion. So Scorpio rules deep, deep emotion, right? Scorpio is a sign opposite Taurus. So Taurus is all about your value, your, um, your relationship with self, your relationship with others, your relationship with money. And then opposite is Scorpio there that wants to transform everything. It's actually the home of your ancestors. So it's not just about you, right? These connections, these patterns that we're here to become aware of and break. Um, Scorpio also rules other people's money and it rules sex and power. So there's this interesting dynamic with a full Scorpio moon. So when I was looking at all the aspects between v Venus and Mars, Venus representing females and representing relationships in general, and Mars representing action and written as a symbol for men, 
Um, and then you've got the Scorpio, heavy Scorpio energy this month. I saw it as a lot of opportunity for kind of like a playfulness, a sexual energy that's available, but it can really easily turn into frustration or um, ends of things or like kind of like breakups or um, yeah, something about like freeing yourself from the relationships that don't work. So it used in a positive light, I think it can be really, really a fun time, especially if you're dating right now, it could be really fun. If you're in a relationship, there could be a spark, but you gotta catch the spark for passion and not let it go into destruction, right? So you have all this available, and also it's all happening through Taurus, so it's kind of like what's going on with yourself too. Are you going to be kind and loving to yourself and break away from the old that doesn't work anymore? Or are you gonna hold on and not wanna release it? Well, the thing is, is that the Scorpio full moon is gonna help you release things whether you like it or not. And it's also a lunar eclipse that likes to take things from us, okay? So this is a big, big opportunity to release. This is a big opportunity to offer up something that you wanna let go of especially when it comes to relationships. This is a great time to look at how you're speaking to yourself. There's so much mercury close to the sun. Mercury's in its retrograde, so we can really look at what's deeply, the deep conversation that's going on under the surface, right? You know how that, when, you, when you're muttering under your breath to yourself or you call yourself stupid or something like that, that's the conversation I'm talking about. And that's the conversation now that can start to come up to the surface and be released. So maybe make a list of all the ways that you talk down to yourself. Maybe take note, maybe when you notice, because sometimes you don't even realize, and you hear it and you can write it down, and then maybe on that full Scorpio moon, which will be on the 5th of May, you can burn that list. You know, you can burn it over a bonfire, you can burn it over the toilet and flush it away, whatever's safe for you. But the act of burning is very much related to Scorpio. And um, so, so use it, use the energy that's available for great transformation, for freedom, and uh, to, for evolving, okay? So we start off the week on May 1st and it's Beltane, which is a pagan holiday. It's a, for, it really is about fertility. It's, it's very sensual. It's really celebrating spring and celebrating, um, in my limited understanding of Beltane, please keep in mind, um, the green man and then the, the witch, so to speak. Um, and then coming together, you know, having children, the celebration of all this fertility. Okay, so it's May Day, also I guess another term for Beltane. Um, not so much seen celebrated in the US, but you, see, you do see it in other countries that it's still celebrated. So keep that in mind, that kind of kicks off the month. And that's like part of the other reason I was feeling so much sensual energy there. And if you're not in a relationship or you're not interested in that kind of sensual energy, that's still passion. And that's still energy that you can pour into your projects or your art, so, or just into your life. So um, you use it however you choose, okay? So we start off the week, happy happy May Day, happy Beltane. Um, we start off with the moon square Venus. Like I said, there's a lot of squares and trines and they're kind of bouncing back and forth all month. Um, we're going to, we have square with Pluto. It's interesting because Pluto's gonna, we have the square going on, then Pluto starts its retrograde and Pluto rules the sign Scorpio. So we have this full moon. So there's a lot of activity with Pluto. Remember Pluto just moved into the sign of Aquarius and it's leaving behind the sign of Capricorn, but the retrograde is gonna send it back into Capricorn for a little while. I think it's gonna do it a few times and then it'll finally station in Aquarius. I believe it's this year. And so this is the final cleanup, especially for you Capricorns, rising sun or moon, or if you have strong uh, Saturn or Capricorn presence in your chart. This is really a time where it's going back, Pluto, which wants to transform everything, is going back into Capricorn, final cleanup. So please pay attention. What things, what's still lingering here? What needs to move forward, okay? Is it when Pluto gets back into Aquarius for good? I hope, 
I'm hoping and I'm envisioning great change for this world because we sure need it. So Friday, where's my little list here? Okay, keep things light on Monday, Beltane. Because of all those squares, let's just keep it light, keep it fun. You know, I think of Beltane, I think of dancing around the Maypole, right? So that is just a fun, light time. On Tuesday the 2nd, the conversations, remember that your conversations are gonna be revisited because of retrograde. So choose your words wisely. On the 3rd, you may wanna spend some simple quality time with women you love because we're going back and forth from the square to the trine. And so, but again, it's simplicity, it's kindness, and the deep conversations are really the ones that you need to be having with yourself right now. Thursday the 4th, it's, I wrote intense times three, because we're moving into Scorpio, we got Scorpio retrograde, and we got square to Pluto, or um, Pluto retrograde and a square to Pluto. So it is intense, lay low, pay attention, envision positive change, because this is a huge opportunity, okay? If you are uh, in the midst of maybe some big work things or financial, there's a really big opportunity here. Now, Friday the 5th, full moon in Scorpio and lunar eclipse, and the full moon is square, um, not only Mars and Pluto, but also it's making a pretty hard square to Lilith, your rightful rage, okay? And so talk about a transformational full moon. The story of Lilith is that she was Adam's first wife before Eve. She did not believe in inequality. She did not want to participate in it, and she left. And she said something to the effect of, I'd rather go live in the desert for the rest of my life than to be in this relationship that is not equal, right? So these are the feelings that may be coming up and I want you to honor them and pay attention to them and not to be used destructively, but to use the destruction of the old to help you move forward into your life in a better place, okay? So no arguing, no aggression, this is a private journey where you can make decisions that can help change your life, okay? But I, I do um, would say that to please any major decisions, really wait until after the 14th, okay? When retrograde ends. So the weekend of five, six, and five, seven, take care of responsibilities because there's some aspects going on with Saturn. Saturn is square the moon all weekend. So Saturn's like, hey, don't forget about your responsibilities, okay? But... When you take, when you do, you can then goof off because you got to try and with Mars and Neptune. So Mars wants to go have fun and Neptune loves a good time. It rules music too. So um, enjoy it. And Neptune really likes to lounge around. So it, get the responsibilities done, then goof off. Venus, the planet of relationships that rules the sign Taurus, we're in Taurus season, is gonna move into the sign of Cancer. And I love Venus and Cancer. I know a lot of people with Venus and Cancer. And I wrote down, savor the sweetness, because Cancer can be so compassionate and it can be, like reminds me of like breakfast in bed. Okay, so just enjoy the period of Venus in Cancer. Now, we move into the week of 5-8 to 5-14, and we are going to still be coming down off full moon fever, okay? We know full moons, we know by now, and especially a Scorpio one. So just keep it in mind, it's pretty intense still. Um, stay focused on Monday the 8th. There's, the moon's gonna be opposite Venus. So when there's an opposition, you know, one side wants one thing, one side wants the other. And so find a middle ground. Venus is your relationships. Venus is your value. Venus can be your money too. And it's opposite the moon. And sometimes the moon wants things, right? Yeah, and you think of like commercials. Commercials are ruled by the moon, right? Because they pull on you and they make you want things. So you might want to be careful what you want and how you spend your money on Monday the 8th, okay? And also retrograde, not the best time to make major purchases. Okay, 5-9, it's a little smoother on Tuesday the 9th because there's more trines. We still have the opposition with Venus, but we've got some beautiful trines with Mercury 
Jupiter and Uranus. So really um, get your work done with ease because the moon will be in the sign of Capricorn that really likes to get things done. And so enjoy Tuesday. On Wednesday the 10th, don't push too hard, okay? Because the opposition then goes in for Mars and the moon. So Mars is like, let's do this. And the moon's like, mm, I might want to sleep a little longer. Okay, so don't push too hard to be right, all right? Thursday the 11th, go with the flow. Things can change easily. The moon moves into Aquarius, and we know Aquarius that we're just never going to know. So uh, go with the flow, not worth an argument. I wrote Friday the 12th, goes to show you never know. That's from a Grateful Dead song. Um, yeah, you never know with Aquarius, you just never know. Pisces weekend. So it's going to be Mother's Day weekend and Mercury is going to go direct. So we are excited and you get to uh, celebrate your mother and Pisces, the moon's in Pisces. So if you're one of the, if you're in the club with me where mom's not here on this planet, Pisces is a great time to still feel her. Okay. So honor her, feel her. Um, make mom feel relaxed. So Pisces is a great time to rest because Pisces are known to love rest. And so be gentle to yourself on Saturday. And then on Sunday, maybe sleep in a little or let mom sleep in, breakfast in bed never hurt. Um, celebrate the end of Mercury retrograde. Things are gonna start to run a little smoother and we're gonna start to head towards the new moon, okay? So then we're gonna move into the week of 515 through 521. And this is a fun week. We got some planetary changes going on. Don't forget your moon water. Um, and because it's always nice to drink some water that's charged by the moon. It helps us align a little better to the energy available, okay? So on Monday the 15th, I wrote onward, but not a good day to push. There's a, there's a square with Venus. I told you, they're just going back and forth all month. Um, Jupiter, the planet of luck and blessings, expansion, bigger picture, foreign travel, is going to move into the sign of Taurus. Okay, so it's moving out of the sign of Aries and it's moving into the sign of Taurus. Not a bad thing to expand Taurus, right? Because honestly, it rules things of value and most of us just go right to money. It also rules our relationships. So allow what you value to expand and grow because that's what Jupiter does. Wherever it is, it just makes things bigger, okay? So Tuesday the 16th, it's a little bit, there's five planets in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed sign, doesn't like to budge. There's a square with Venus that rules the sign Taurus. And I wrote, there could be tension with relationships, especially with women. Do your own thing. Just kind of goof off on Tuesday. Do your own thing if you can, okay? Now, Wednesday the 17th, things can get sexy if you're flexible and kind. So, you know, as much as these squares going on, those frictional aspects, we got a square with Mars and Pluto, sometimes the friction just to hit right can make a spark, okay? So, use it, enjoy it, but don't push or it's just gonna be like this, okay? The 18th is a little smoother. It's a day to enjoy because there's there's not as many, there's not the squares going on that day. So enjoy Thursday. If there's things this week that you like, you're like, ah, but I, I gotta take care of this. This is important. I have to have this conversation or whatever it is. Thursday's your day, the 18th, okay? The moon will be in Taurus and things just are a little bit calmer. So then on Friday the 19th, we move into the new moon in Taurus. And this new moon, it's square Saturn, right? So Saturn wants certain things taken care of and done. Taurus will do it when they want to. Um, let's think about what's really a value to you and do you have a practical plan? Because Saturn's not gonna let you get away without a practical plan. So you can dream, you can wish about the things that you want, but you need to have a practical plan moving forward, okay? Then things lighten up because we move into a Gemini weekend. And by Sunday, the moon is, or I'm sorry, the sun is gonna move into the sign of Gemini too. 
I always love Gemini season. Maybe it's because I'm a Gemini moon, but Gemini is just fun energy. Yeah, it can sometimes be shallow. It can sometimes be maybe a little empty in some ways, but who doesn't like just a good fun time, right? So this is Gemini. So Saturday, have fun, but don't forget your responsibilities because Saturn is still making that square. Mars is gonna enter the sign of Leo. So Mars, the planet of action, the planet that rules men, um, is gonna move into this fiery, heart-centered sign of Leo. So I, I'm, I'm telling you to go for it if it's what you truly want. Okay, because Leo isn't gonna like isn't good at really like doing things just because someone else wants you to. Leo's really they know they've mastered healthy selfish. Okay, so if you want if you really want it, Mars to Leo, go for it. If you're like, nah, it might not be the right thing. Okay, all right. So then we're going to move into the final week of May, which is May twenty second to. I wrote Sun to Gemini. Let's get this party started. Okay, so summer will begin. 522, we're going into Memorial Day weekend. And we're going to, on Monday, we got a square to Neptune. The moon's in Cancer. So it's a lot of watery energy. And it's a good time to rest. So you might want to take some time alone if you need it on Monday the 22nd. Take it slow. Tuesday the 28th. We've got some trines going on with the Saturn and Neptune. And it's just a great time to be extra kind to yourself. Get the things done that are bought, you know, on your mind and taking up your energy, work on things. But it's kind of like the idea of like working and then taking a break. Working and then moving slowly, taking that break. I That's the way I work. I find that that makes me stay calmer, right? I get a lot done and then I, even if it's in a few minutes at a time, right? And then just, again, okay, take breaks, move slowly. Friday the 24th, or I'm sorry, Wednesday the 24th, there's squares with Mercury and Jupiter. I wrote more work, less talk. It, with Mercury, the planet of communication is squaring the moon, and then you've got Jupiter there too, making it bigger. You might wanna be really careful. So Wednesday the 24th, not a great day for like deep conversation, especially anything confrontational. On Thursday the 25th, I wrote, take a personal day, do what you want. The, um, we have the, not only the square with Mercury, but also a square with Uranus. And Uranus, everything can be just kind of unpredictable. So just, you know, th Wednesday and Thursday are good days to just stay focused on you. Friday's much lighter, okay? Friday, um, we have a trine with Jupiter and you have to be flexible. That's the thing. You, you'll have fun if you're flexible. It'll be lighter if you're flexible because there's a square with Uranus and you're never going to win with Uranus. Uranus is that lightning bolt of unexpected things. And so plans can change. Things can just, oh, there's this and oh, I didn't know. And oh, this like friend is in town unexpectedly. So just be adaptable with it. And it is Gemini season. Gemini is a mutable, adaptable sign. So flow with that. Go hear some live music on Friday night if you can, okay? It'll be a fun time for that. The weekend of Memorial Day weekend, it's gonna be a Virgo weekend. So on Saturday, we have some beautiful trines with Mercury and Jupiter. And so go for it. You've got this. Go out, if you have to have the conversations then, it's great. It's, it's just an easier flowing day on the 27th. And then on the 28th, I wrote work hard, play hard, um, more trines going on. And Virgo, you know, Virgo likes to get like things in order and things done and things um, like, it's like cleaning your car out and going to the store and getting what you need and getting your groceries and getting everything lined up and then line up the fun with it too, okay? And did I leave? I think I left Memorial Day Monday off the sheet for the following week, but I'll tell you about it anyways. So the moon will be in Virgo until about 10.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Memorial Day. So then it moves into the sign of Libra, right? Libra, this air sign, uh, a sign of relationships, a sign of balance. 
So you may have to compromise a little bit about what you're doing on Memorial Day. You may want to spend it with others. Um, but don't overlook what you want just because everybody else wants something because that's a tendency of Libra. Okay, be careful. Obviously, it's a holiday. Libra does rule the law, so keep that in mind. Make sure, you know, I always feel like I'm like on my um, mom here lecturing my my adult children to make sure you have a designated driver make sure that you've thought things out because the sun will be in an air sign and the moon will be an air sign and air signs can sometimes not always think and so just be aware of that um, get yourself situated for what you're going to do on memorial day and make sure remember what is being celebrated on Memorial Day and how that affects you, because this is a relationship sign, right? So how this affects your freedoms, um, how what people what people stood up for uh, changed our lives, and to kind of be grateful for that. So this beautiful Libra Moon Day, okay? So that is our month of May. It feels really good to me. It feels a little like. Mm, like you got to navigate a lot of uh, squares and trine or trines, but so it can feel a little extreme or maybe you're like, oh, I thought that things were good and now things are weird again, but they'll keep adjusting. Okay. And Taurus is just such a lovely season. And then Gemini is just such a fun and playful sign. So enjoy the lightness as we move closer and closer into summertime. But this is your month to leave behind the old baggage. This is your month to take that, that Scorpio moon and just accept all of the change that it wants to bring you. Because I truly do believe that it wants to bring you change that is going to make your life better and make your experience here better and what your whole mission here was in the first place. This is a good time to kind of burn off some of the stuff that isn't working, right? And some of that can just be energy that we've picked up. Uh, being on this planet with a lot of people who aren't conscious, okay? So I think we'll jump over here into the cards. And I used this really pretty Beltane deck since it is Beltane. We got Seasons of the Witch. And I use that for the piles here. So for pile number one, we have this beautiful Phoenix card. And this says, summoned, your flesh rises from the ashes and into the expansive flame of your soul. This is so Scorpio. Scorpio is the phoenix rising up out of the ashes into the, your high, being your higher self, okay? So that's pile one. Again, you're going to pick the first pile that you're drawn to. Don't overthink it. Pile number two, we have flower crown. And this says... Wear your power proudly and unapologetically, for it's your birthright and is eternal like the soul. So wear your power proudly. No hiding your power. This is a month of power. This is, this is our Scorpio full moon. Now we've got for pile number three, the beautiful Maypole. So much joy. Wish we saw more of this being celebrated in the U.S., I am fertile in what I seed for. There is reason to dance and drink upon the riches I receive. I am fertile in what I seed for. Okay, maple. So go ahead, pick your pile, and let's get started. Okay, pile number one. You pick the phoenix, card number 31 in this deck, which in numerology we would call that a four, which is a pause number kind of a foundation number. Summoned, your flesh rises from the ashes and into the expansive flame of your soul. Now I'm using a bunch of new decks that I'm really excited about. And one of them is The Witch's Garden. And this is by Sasha Graham. And wow, I mean, I love this. I've like fallen in love with this deck. And we just got a bunch of them in stock. So I'm gonna be working with this. I'll tell you when I pull some cards from that. Um, I also have another new one that I'm kind of taken with. It's called the Pastoral Tarot. This just came in. It looks like French countryside. It's so gorgeous. 
And then I have some of my old favorites here. I have the Herb Crafters, which you see me work with often, and the Green Witch, which has become another really favorite of mine, okay? And we're gonna throw in at the end some Zen Tarot, which I'm just, that deck is so great. It's a little different. It's like not a traditional tarot deck. That's really cool. All right, so let's see pile number one, what you need to know here. All right, what do you need to know this month ahead? And we've got two cards falling out immediately. Our first card is the tower and it's the mushroom card here. This, this is such a great tower card, the breakdown. Okay, it's breaking things down. These mushrooms are eating that tree. And so there is just this natural breakdown. And I like that. And it feels like this phoenix rising, right? The phoenix broke down into ash and rose up. Here's your tower card. And the tower card is card number 16. And in numerology, we call that a seven. And seven is our number for the year in 2023. When you add 2023, 20, it equals seven. So this is the card, one of the cards of the year along with the chariot. And so it's telling me that this, you're ready. Oh, you are so ready. And honestly, it's kind of ready or not, because it's coming. You've got the hanged one, burdock. Very cool. I mean, I think burdock grows in my backyard, I think if you dig deep enough, right? Um, it's such, I, I remember cooking with burdock and macrobiotic cooking because it's supposed to like be like really grounding and purifying. And so there's this purification happening here for you. There's this natural breakdown, this natural purification. It's almost like, like almost like it's in the cards for you. This is what was needed to happen. This is a natural process. So please don't blame yourself for the things that are breaking down. We've got the five of wands here. This is from the um, witch's garden. And it looks like they're having a spaghetti dinner, but they're actually eating worms. And the worms are kind of fighting back, okay? So this is the five of fire, five a number of change. This is a card of passion. This can be a card of teamwork. This can also be a card of fighting, right? So there's kind of a little bit of a power struggle here, but this is natural. This is the natural world. Okay, you got a lot of like natural world energy here. Let's see what your foundation card is. And speaking of the natural world, you have the death card, but look how absolutely natural that looks. Okay, so this is Scorpio. Scorpio is the death card. And so here at the bottom, it's just a natural part of life, this breakdown. That this, you know, we spend so much energy being afraid of this. And it's like, no, this is the same thing that's happening here. They're breaking down the tree. And so here it is. And I almost get that you're expending a lot of energy about the death process. It's here and it's natural. And we're gonna die a million deaths before we technically die, right? And this is the month of that. This is some of the million, million deaths. And it can be a natural process. Now behind the scenes from the Green Witch here, we have the Page of Pentacles. Kinda looks like he's young, he's learning his power. learning yeah he's learning his magic just keep working at it in the background okay and here from the witch's garden we have the hierophant i like this hierophant version these kids kind of knocking on her door she looks like she's an old witch or an old uh someone with a lot of knowledge and it's interesting how these books have kind of been put to the side over here because she has all the information this is also a five. It's a five of fire because it's a Sagittarius card. So these cards are kind of linked here. Okay, there's a lot of great wisdom there behind the scenes. You're learning. It's almost like you're learning now, but you're gonna you're gonna ah, advance very quickly. Your future position, we have the devil card. Okay, so the devil card wants us to look at all the things that we're like enslaved to 
all the old, um, especially old relationships. There's a couple down there. They're technically the lovers in front of the devil. There's a cup spilt. And so it's really like taking a look at the things that we don't want to look at, right? We want to just throw it into the devil pile. And I remember um, George Corey, a great, a great uh, psychic and tarot reader, and he told me that he was trying to explain the devil to me, and he kept saying the devil is this energy field. You know, he grew up going to Catholic schools, and I grew up being a Jehovah's Witness, and we both had some trauma about the devil. Is he, he compared it to this, this like energy pile that like everyone just tosses everything that's not understood just over onto the devil and it almost becomes its own entity. And so here we want to take a look at those things that we just didn't want to deal with, especially when it comes to love and sex and all that kind of stuff. And then we have the five of wands. Interesting. So this is the same card as the birds here that look like they were having a spaghetti dinner okay so there's a lot of you got three fives with the hierophant also so there's a lot of change happening and this is like it's very orchestrated okay it's all in the books and so everything you need is being given to you Everything is moving ahead as it needs to move ahead. You've got some, you've got one, two, three, four, five major arcanas. So there, there's some, there's a lot this month. You have a great opportunity here for great change. Let me pull a few more cards. So what is the change that can come out of this? The fool. Oh, I like him and the moon, more majors. So what can come out of this transformation? There's a fresh start, there's a new story, there's a new opportunity, and here's the moon. It's a great healing. She's naked there, she's lighter, she's, she's released. Okay, and then I, this really feels like the Scorpio full moon to me. So please harness the energy of the Scorpio full moon. Make the most of the changes that need to be made for you. Um, there's a lot of power here for you. And, and when you drop the things that need to be dropped, there is some great opportunities here for you. So any more, I'm gonna use this um, Zen Tarot. Anything else about what it is that you need to be working through right now to have to receive this great release and fresh start that's happening. I've got the card of playfulness and flowering. So what do you need to do? He's lightening up, he reminds me of the fool playfulness. It's funny that it's a uh, um, clown because the George Corey that I was just referencing, he actually was a clown for uh, many years of his life and flowering. So it doesn't actually look like, like this is like some huge intense, it is intense, but it's not like the, what you can do, what your power in it is, is, uh, is opening. Right, he's opening, she, her hands are out, she's opening. And so she's blossoming, she's flowering. This moon card has the same kind of energy. This opening, okay? So keep it light, be kind to yourself, allow this transformation, something old is looking to move out got a lot of wisdom. These changes are coming in for you. There's a lightness here about accepting death as a natural process and, and, and accepting the, the, the million deaths before the final death as part of the process, okay? There's some old stories that you're ready to drop. You can do this and you can do, and your role in it is a lightness, a playfulness, a gentleness, okay? So I've got a bunch of dice here. I've got some new ones. And I want to talk to you about like days of the month that are good for you. I know that some of you enjoy hearing the dates that are good for you. So I am looking for um, power days, power dates, 
and any other themes, okay? Now, we've got the south node, which is the past, things from the past, okay? And that was what I was getting in here too, was like there's old stories, old things that are ready to be released. You've got the sign of Leo, and so Leo is about, right, healthy, selfish, the heart, you, getting back to you, not just all of them. You also got, let's see if I can read some of these new dice. What did you get? You got Chiron, which is an old wound. Oh, and we didn't finish here. You got the 11th house. Okay. So first off, South Node, Leo, 11th house. So there may be some old people from the past, especially old friends. There may be, there's a little theme of like selfishness, like maybe, um, maybe you've been even called selfish by a friend. But there's something here where it's like, no, you have to keep choosing you and your playfulness and your fl flowering, right? So um, you may be, some friends may be a way to test you of that. So just pay attention to that. There's some old wounds with Chiron there. And they're really ready, you're ready to leap ahead from those, okay? So you've got the new moon. So the new moon we know is a little later in the month. Let me give you those dates. So you've got a power day here around the new moon. And where was that new moon? I know it's towards the end of the month. It's on Friday the 19th, so that was a power day for you, okay? You also got a fire symbol that day. And you got a two. And so this is the second house, this is Taurus. And then you also rolled another 11. So you got the 11th house twice. So I want you to pay attention for the 11th of May. I want you to pay attention to old friends because the 11th house is the uh, house of friends, large groups of people. I want you to pay attention to Aquarius in your life, okay? The Aquarius. And any day that the moon is in Aquarius. And you can use a moon calendar to look at that. But I can tell you right off the bat that Aquarius is the 11th of May, the 12th of May, onto the 13th of May, okay? And I think that's the only Aquarius days for the month. Okay, you also rolled another funny symbol. And I have not learned all these symbols yet, but I'm going to try to tell you what this is. And it looks like it's Aquarius again. So you got a lot of Aquarius going on here. So pay attention to the Aquarius in your life. Pay attention to the old friends that are coming up and make sure that you're standing your ground, speaking from your heart and your own value. Again, paying attention to the days that the moon is in Aquarius and the number 11 and the number two. So the 11th of May, the 2nd of May, okay? And I'm gonna even say the 22nd of May. Those are all gonna be important days for you this month, okay? So I think we did everything. Have a Thank you for listening and have a great month ahead. Pile number two, this beautiful flower crown. Reminds me of my girls making flower crowns when they were a kid, so cute. Okay, so we are here with the month of May and I'm using some new favorite decks. So um, this one has just, oh, it's, I'm smitten. The Witch's Garden by Sasha Graham. Such a good one. And we just got a whole bunch in stock. So that I will share with you. I'm also using um, the Green Witch, which I think you've seen me use before. I love this. The Witch's Garden kind of reminds me of the Green Witch a little bit, um, but they complement each other so well. I also have this new one called Pastoral Tarot, which feels like French countryside. Really gorgeous. We just got those in stock too. And then I'm going to throw in some um, Zen Tarot at the end, which this is a little bit of a different formatted deck. But it, I really love it, really love it. Okay, and you'll see a couple of favorites like Herb Crafters. Yeah, okay. So I haven't looked at any of these cards. I use my pendulum to choose um, decks and especially the one, um, card for your pile. Very flower crown wanted to be pile number two. So 
Let's see what messages we have here for you. And we're starting off here with the nine of air, the pomegranate. So this is traditionally called the nine of swords. What a different version of the nine of swords, right? It's so, it's cut open. Um, you can see all of the delicious, delicious filling of the pomegranate. So I, I really, I like this version because it's like, usually the nine of swords is, is kind of considered a negative card or, you know, it's often called the insomnia card or just the over worrying. But this is showing that like, sometimes you have to cut things open, right? To see the goodness, I guess. So, um, what am I getting from that? It's transformative time here. There's really good things that can come out of it. So I guess that's what I'm getting so far. All right, a heart of the matter, we have the six of swords. And here's this boat being pulled in, or maybe just, you know, it's, it seems like it's on a pulley. It's being pulled in, six of swords. So you got two air cards to start. Let's see what else we've got going on here. The heart, supporting the heart of the matter, you got your first major arcana. You got the sun card. Isn't that gorgeous? This is the pastoral, pastoral tarot, even the back's gorgeous. So the sun, Leo, right? And so it's really things being seen. When we know with the Scorpio full moon, often things are revealed because Scorpio has to, it has to do with secrets. And so things are shown to us, okay? So things are being pulled into us. Information is being pulled in as the Six of Swords shows up. We can really see what's going on, okay? Your foundation card, let's see which one wants to be the foundation card. The foundation card of the reading is the Queen of Wands. She's got her pretty lilacs next to her, holding up her wand. She's kind of an interesting Queen of Wands. So you got this fire queen at the bottom. And it's almost like they got the sun, which is a fire card, and the queen of wands. And so she's just ready. She's just there, and she's ready to take action as needed. But she doesn't look worried. She, she just looks at peace. Okay, so that's your foundation card, kind of at peace here as this information is brought in. Now, don't forget your flower crown card said, wear your power proudly and unapologetically, for it is your birthright and it, it is eternal like the soul. So we're asking you with themes here to be unapologetic for your power. Okay, maybe you have the, maybe you've known some things and now it's actually showing that it's true got behind the scenes we have the page of swords definitely brings information okay so you may have already I kind of what I'm getting from this is like you may have already had a feeling about something or someone maybe you were told that that wasn't true maybe you were told like the pomegranate here you know it looks so lovely on the tree this is what's really going on on the inside. And that's kind of what I'm getting here is that you know something, maybe you have a feeling about someone, or you, but you know the information was brought to you. And um, now it's kind of almost like it's gonna be revealed to others. Here's the Ace of Wands. It's definitely something showing up brightly. Okay, behind the scenes here. In the future position, we have another ace. This is the Ace of Cups, and this is plantain in this deck. So things are flowing along. It's like a, it's almost like a pretty wide river here. And so, the, it, yeah, okay, let me just pull this last one. Here's the Hermit, the Holy King. Okay, yeah, I just keep getting that you knew something. You knew something about someone, you had a feeling about something, and maybe other people told you it was incorrect. Maybe, um, but you knew and you were kind of just waiting and now others are going to know. Let me see what this is. Am I, uh, is it correct? Okay. Yeah, here's the Seven of Cups like you've been waiting. Seven of Cups isn't known for clarity. She's transplanting her lavender, it looks like here. It's outgrown the pot. 
So I feel like she's just waiting. Everything's lining up and things are showing itself. It's time. Thing, um, yeah, things are changing. And then you got the tower card. I like how there's a net down there. Okay. It doesn't feel good to be right what, about things like this. I don't think that that was necessary. You, you weren't looking to be right. You just were. And now it's kind of playing out here. It could be with a friendship. It's a tower again. Okay. This deck is fun because it's sideways. All the cards are. So you got the tower twice. You are definitely right. And it's going to be seen. There's some big changes coming here. Is this in regards to friendships? The High Priestess. Yeah, so it's about some relationship. It's a two. She's at peace. She knew. She always knows. She's ruled by the moon. The information's just given to her. Okay, so that's what I'm getting. I'm getting that there's something here that you were right about. I think it has to do with friendships. I think that you saw the real truth of it. Um, you don't, there's not a need for you to be right, but I think it did validate something in you that your intuition's strong, that you knew, and you're just waiting for others to, to, to realize too. Um, let me pull one of these. Con conscious. Okay. Anything else that they need to know? Oh, that's too many. Plus cards, please. Okay. All right, you got compromise, creator, and sorrow. Okay. So I kind of get from this that like you were you didn't have an intention to like make somebody upset or to um, say the truth about something that you, I don't think you were looking to be right. I think your intuition's really strong and you were picking up on something and you knew it and now you're going to be validated, but it, you don't really need the validation. You just need the validation for yourself that your intuition is correct. That's what I'm getting from this. I'm going to pull a few more cards. Am I, am I missing anything else? Got the magician. This is the witch. This is this is uh, Scorpio. Also could be considered Mars, Aries. So she knew. Okay, so now she's going to honor her power more. I feel like this kind of intuition stuff takes, sometimes it takes a few times of like, oh, you know what? I was right. Or because sometimes people will think that you're like making it up or that you're being judgmental. But actually, you were right. And you were right about something here. Um, the Knight of Cups here got this cup of satisfaction. So now you can just take this as a validation that your intuition is on, okay? Um, and it doesn't have to be about the ego and it doesn't have to be, it's not about condemning this other person. It's about you acknowledging your power and not being sorry for it, unapologetically accepting your intuition, the power of your intuition, okay? And I'm just going to pull a couple more. Is there anything else? I feel like that was it, but is there something else they need to know? And you've got the Seven of Swords. And there's a skunk walking by. Okay. And I, I, interesting about the skunk, because like, you know, the skunk's odor is offensive to some, but to some it's really appealing. So Seven of Swords, you're not going to be for everyone. You may have felt that you needed to sneak around. Um, I feel like there was someone that you said, like you almost said something negative about maybe someone's partner or someone's friend or something. And you, like, there's almost like a saying, like an apology this month, but you're not apologizing for, you're, you were right. But you, it, maybe the manner wasn't, maybe the manner wasn't the best way. Okay, so this is a month to please acknowledge your intuition, please, because you don't want to have to keep learning this lesson. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to roll some dice here. And I'm looking for, I got a lot of dice, so that's new ones. I'm looking for some power days for you this month. 
the north node just fell out. I'm gonna put it back in. North node is about your, your dharma, what you came here to do, right? So you don't wanna get distracted always by the karmic relationships. This kind of has a twist of karmic relationships. Maybe some unfinished business from the past, maybe some um, types of behavioral patterns that this isn't the first time this has happened. Um, but there's something here that you came here to learn. And I think some of it is that you are, uh, your intuition is very high. And, uh, you know, sometimes people like ask me if you're special because your intuition's high. And I think that, that what's special is, is that you acknowledged it. I think a lot of people have it. I think humans have intuition in general. They just don't, they ignore it. You have the chance here to acknowledge that yours is very high. And you could, it's you just have to learn how to work with it so that you don't hurt other people, okay? But sometimes it's too bad that you hurt other people. Sometimes people need to hear it. Sometimes people just don't want to hear it, okay? So let's talk about important dates this month for you, important themes. Let's see what we've got. Okay, first off, you got the moon. And you've got the moon in the sign of Capricorn. And you've got it in the eighth house, which is Scorpio's house, the house of transformation. So right here, the moon and Capricorn, a uh, little tougher spot for the moon because Capricorn is very serious. It's ruled by Saturn and Capricorn likes to get, it likes its work and it likes to get things done. It likes its status, right? And sometimes the moon and Capricorn pe people aren't always as gentle with themselves as they need to be. And so this is asking you to transform that now eighth house maybe not putting work first all the time maybe making sure that you're scheduling some downtime also now the chiron did come out chiron the soul's wound point is showing up great time to heal some old wounds you've got eighth house eighth house is scorpio we've got a scorpio moon this month and so i would be looking at the days where the moon is in the sign of capricorn so let's take a look here you know i have an, a moon calendar here which is date book these are great or you can just use an app but this tells you where the moon is every day we want to know that and so the moon's going to be in capricorn on monday the 8th in the evening you rolled an eight so you want to pay attention to monday the 8th tuesday the 9th and wednesday the 10th those are going to be power days for you also anything with the eighth so you've got the eighth again which we just said so i would really put a star on the 8th of may in your calendar okay then I would take multiples of eight. So I would say the 16th, I would keep an eye on. And um, okay, maybe even the first and the seventh, all right? Now let's see what else we got. We got a fire sign here and we and you rolled the full moon. It's a full Scorpio moon and you already rolled the eighth house Scorpio. So this is a really good time. This is the, with also with the fire symbol. This is a good time to write those things down that needs to be transformed and burn that list. So burn it over the toilet safely, flush it, flush it away, okay? You also rolled a number one. Is that a number one? No, it's a number seven. We're in a seven year in numerology. Now, so now I would also be marking on your calendar May 7th. And since you had the 8th, I would say May 15th. And I would go with May 6th. So you've got the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Very power days for you there, okay? And then we also rolled this thing that has three stars on it. And let's see what that says, because I am learning. These are some new dice we got into the store. And so what is that one with the three? That is creative expression. Creative expression, okay. And then you may want to add the third onto your list too. Okay. Oh, and we missed one symbol here. And this is has a little moon on it. Let's see what this says. Sorry, I'm still, still learning this. Where is it? Well, it definitely looks like the moon. And... Oh, it's a sign cancer. It's a sign cancer. Okay, so then we're going to add the, the when the moon is in cancer also to your list of days that are important for you. Now remember, Venus is moving into cancer, so there's a gentleness, a compassion. I want you to have a lot of compassion for yourself this month, especially if this situation did unfold the way that I saw it. Um, be compassionate to yourself. 
Um, the moon will be in the sign of Cancer on the right around lunchtime on the 21st through the 22nd, 23rd, and into the morning of the 24th. Okay, so thank you for joining me. I have a fabulous month ahead. Pile number three, this lovely May poll card. It's number 24 in the deck. And so this says, I am fertile in what I seed for. There is reason to dance and drink upon the riches I receive. Beautiful celebration. Okay, so happy May Day, happy Beltane. Let's see what you need to know this month of May. Now, I'm using some really great decks today. I've got some new ones in stock at the store. And my newest favorite, I'm always talking about my newest favorite. My newest favorite is The Witch's Garden by Sasha Graham. Fabulous. I love the art. I love it. It's like really light, but it's like got a Scorpio undertone that I love. Beautiful. Um, it complements really well with the Green Witch that you've seen me use a lot. So we'll be using those today. We also have one of my old standards here, the Herb Crafters. And then this new one called Pastoral Tarot that looks like um, French countryside. Okay, so we also have that one in stock. And I'm going to throw in at the end some Zen Tarot, which I'm really enjoying, which is a little bit different than a standard tarot deck. Uh, but it's very lovely. All right. Month of May. I chose these cards. I did not look at any of them. And I'm shuffling them. So we have random order here. And let's see what you need to know. We're starting off with the Six of Pentacles. So there's some kind of financial exchange going on here. All right. Maybe a little... He's got his hand behind his back. He's holding some dice. Watching your transactions right now, okay? Making sure they're on the up and up, knowing Mercury's in retrograde. So being careful about our financial transactions, okay? Especially since it's in the sign of Taurus. Now, the heart of the matter, we have the Eight of Wands. Looks like she's setting a place for a meal, picnic, preparing. Eight of Wands is traditionally the honeymoon card. There's a lot of passion there. Looks like she's harvested some of the plants herself. Eight of Wands. It's almost like she's waiting for you. Waiting for you to arrive at the table that's been set for you. Supporting the heart of the matter. I believe this is the King of Air, Cor Corandera of Air, and it's Rosemary in this deck. Now, I love Rosemary and it's freshly cut for you and so like there's all this stuff like this is being prepared for you this is being offered to you king of air king of swords big business uh yeah he almost has like almost like angel wings tattooed on his arm the scent of rosemary to me is so satisfying Okay, so we've got that. And then let's see what your foundation card is here in this reading. And we've got the strength card. Look how lovely this is from Pastoral Tarot. These cards are all this way, which is kind of fun. Strength, Leo, the lion, fiery. Look how they just look so relaxed, right? But they'll pounce when they need to. There's this chilling out mother, mother child. Okay. So that is your foundation card. So, so far I'm seeing some kind of transaction, being careful. It, it looks like it could easily have like a shady vibe to it. There's Your heart is like ready, it's setting a place for someone. So maybe you're looking for a relationship or maybe it's something business-wise where you're, you have all the resources together. Maybe you've even borrowed to make something happen, right? And then this king of business, king of air, is handing you this rosemary. It's refreshing. In the bottom, we have strength. Now, it may feel like inactivity, but you know those cats can pounce when they're ready. Okay, let's see what's going on in the background. We have the king of swords again. Big business. Great wisdom. The 
owl. Wow. Could be considered a Gemini king. We're going into Gemini season this month. The high priestess. There she is. She knows exactly what to put in her potion. She's a two, so she, she has to do with relationships. So I'm kind of getting like, I'm getting like a business relationship here. And although the Maypole kind of, like it could be for some of you business transaction and it could be some of you is looking for a partner. Could be both. But I'm getting that almost like you, um, You've made some deals, right? You've, okay, I'll take that, you take this. There's been some financial deals. Maybe you've borrowed money so that you could make this offering, that you maybe you're launching a business. You're setting a place for someone. You're sharing with them your resources and your resourcefulness. There seems to be an offer being made to you or that you're wanting an offer to be made to you, okay? You may feel frustrated right now because it's not moving at the speed that you want it to, but it looks to me like things are happening. Let's see what the future position says. We have the Knight of Cups. I really love this card because I love that all her armors down here, or his or they or whoever, um, the armor is down at the bottom. And now, like, like they've taken off some of the armor. They still have the chest area um, on. But there's almost like a relaxation, okay? And almost a distraction. Like, this is a distraction. And you can relax a little bit because you put all this work into what's going on. And then we have the Madre of Fire, which would be the Queen of Wands. And it's time. I love that. So you got Rosemary and time. Potions, brews, kind of reminds me of this high priestess over here, making her potion. Okay, she's the queen of fire, so things are picking up. So what I'm getting from this is whatever it is that's going on, whether it's whether it's trying to launch a business, trying to put the money here, take there, give there, put here. Maybe there's a team of people that you're working with. But you're setting a place for this. You're showing your resourcefulness. And it's going to, going to start to pick up speed, okay? There's some things being offered to you. Again, there's a sense of like inactivity, but it's not correct. The activity is moving forward. I would advise you to distract yourself with things that bring you joy, okay? Like this Knight of Cups is in the water. And, and just kind of, and there's a book down here and there's, there's just like enjoyment. It almost looks like there's paint down there. So do something to distract yourself because this is coming together. Things are brewing. Things are moving. And time, I think time, I know time essential oil is called the oil of truth. So this is kind of, this is all coming together. The magic is being made. The cooking, it's all happening. But I think you think it's not. Is this about business or is this about love? Okay, I think it's what it is, is that it's a little bit of both. And I think for some of you, it's more one than the other. So for business, yeah, I feel like there's something that's been like starting out that you've been going for, you've been really, really going for it. And there's some wisdom here that's coming in because the King of Swords showed up later, which is more mature. There's also the Three of Pentacles that you've been growing something. You've been building something little by little, okay? So you're building a foundation. So I do think that this is work-related for some of you. Love-related, though, for some of you, we've got the Wheel of Fortune and it came up reversed, which it's kind of not, you know, almost feels the same because it's a wheel got pan down there at the bottom. So for love, I think that maybe you've been um, getting the same type of person, the same thing, and you're ready to break that. And the high priestess came in, and this is the second time that you got her, although she came in reversed also. So um, I think that it's time that you really start to understand what you're what you're attracting, okay? And then you almost have to make be aware of what you've been attracting so that you can create a new 
blend, a new potion so that you can bring in what it is that you are looking for. I think you've been bringing in the same type of people and that they might have been a little destructive. I feel like you've been hiding your power and I think you've been hiding your intuition. And it's time now where it's time, T-H-Y-M-E, that, that you're ready to break that. And the Scorpio moon month is a great time to break that. So let's see how you can break that. that cycle of just people that aren't right for you. How can you break that? Trust. Okay, so I think some of it is just consciousness that you've been doing that and then being able to trust that you can change that too. Now, over here for work, you've been putting a lot into this. What do you need to know? Comparison, okay? Don't compare yourself to others, okay? Bamboo is a really resourceful, more natural product. It takes a shorter time to grow than this tree does. And we don't need to be cutting down all of our trees, right? So this is comparison. And then the word resourceful is coming up. And the word resourceful came up for this. Okay. So do not, there's a change here. So whatever business it is that you're doing, the way that things have been done before are no longer green. They're no longer working. They have to change. Like bamboo is being used, right? They're using bamboo for clothing. They're using bamboo like instead of cotton. They're using bamboo a lot. So please do not compare yourself to old outdated ways, okay? that it, This is new. Whatever field that you're working in, the world's changing so rapidly by the second. Um, yeah, you can't, you have to drop the comparisons, okay? Is there anything else that pile three needs to know? Receptivity and celebration, okay? And so here's receptivity. It kind of reminds me of pheromones, what you're letting out. Okay, so you want to start looking at like, I feel like for the relationship part, you've been like, putting out the same chemical body reaction that's bringing in the same types of people and they don't work for you anymore. They're outdated. They're, um, they're not in the light of who you are anymore. And so you want to be really conscious of what you're putting out there. So you can do that by um, acknowledging the behavioral patterns, acknowledging the change that you're ready to make, and um, starting to shift, okay? And then you've got this beautiful celebration card, which is telling me, like, what else can you do? You can live in gratitude. You can live in the joy of the things that you do have. These other things are going to start to work out for you. And soon you will be celebrating, okay? So I'm just gonna pull a couple more. Is there anything else that pile number three needs to know today? Nope. The six of wands. Anything else? Okay. Six of Wands, triumphant success. And the Seven of Pentacles. Funny how she's got all the like these tarot cards down there. Okay. And this is a card usually when like things aren't growing fast enough for you, but they are. She's looking at the cards, and in the meantime, the pumpkins are growing huge next to her. It's building. Okay, I think feel like this is for the business people. Things are building. Things are really, really building for you. And for the love people, one more card. The Four of Wands. Oh, look at that. It looks like a Beltane celebration. Okay, there's your, there's your people. There's your partner. Okay, don't lose faith. That's coming. Okay, so let's talk about, I'm working with a bunch of new dice today. I got a bunch here. And so we're going to talk about dates for you this month using the dice and anything else that you need to know here, okay? Uh, signs of people that are important, but I'm especially looking for dates. Okay, so let's start off with the fact that you got this planet Venus, okay? 
and you got the planet Venus in the sign of Scorpio and you've got it in the eighth house, which is Scorpio's house. Now, Venus in Scorpio isn't necessarily the easiest placement, okay? Because Venus wants to love and Scorpio gets hurt really easily, okay? And they take things really deep and they hold on to it for a long time. So if there's some old things here that you've been holding on to, this is the time to transform it. It's a Scorpio full moon. Okay, so be a be willing to love again. Be willing to put your heart out there. Be willing. You're safe. Is what it, what I'm what I'm getting. Be willing. Okay, and also be compassionate to yourself if there's been some old hurts that you're still feeling a little ache over. Okay, that's okay. Those can help you to not choose the same type of people again. Okay, now also Venus is a symbol for. Uh, your finances, right? A value of money. And Scorpio rules other people's money. So there is a transformation here going on financially. Now you also rolled a 10 in, in 10th house is Saturn's house. It's the house of your career and your long standing in society, okay? So we're gonna look, we've got those themes going on. You also got the North Node, which is about what you came here to do, your, your Dharma, the work you came to do. You also rolled a waxing crescent moon. So you're going to want to pay attention to the waxing crescent, um, I guess, which would be after the full moon. No, waxing is gaining. So as you're building up to this full moon, you've got a cup here, which is the cup of satisfaction. And what else did you get? You got a crab here. This is a symbol for cancer. And you've got four stars. Let me look that up because I'm still learning these days. Um, four is practicality and diligence, okay? The cup says, um, I'm sure it's satisfaction, but let's see what it says. Love, relationships, and feelings. And then you also got cancer, which is all about feelings. And we know Venus is going to move into cancer this month. So this could be a very good time for you, love-wise and financially-wise, okay? Um it's power days for you. We're looking at the 8th of May. We are looking at the 10th of May, okay? We are also looking at any time the moon is in the sign of Cancer. You've got a lot of that going on. So the moon will be in the sign of Cancer. My little trusty calendar here will tell me. Um, mon uh, Monday, May 22nd. Oh, it starts on the evening of Sunday, very uh, almost by midnight on Sunday the 21st, Monday the 22nd, Tuesday the 23rd, Wednesday the 24th. Those are going to be power days for you. I would also be looking at the 8th of May and the 10th of May, okay? Now, um, I think this is a time that if you are looking for a relationship, you can find one. But I want you to really think about the difference between your dharma and your karma, what you came here to do, and then the karma of old relationships that show up. And this is a time for you to stay focused on what you came here to do. Because I kind of get the feeling that there's some big work stuff and there's some big love stuff, okay? And they kind of are operating off the same energy fields. So they're affecting each other. I'm going to pull one more card for you because I feel like there's one more. And it's a six of wands again. So it's this one and this one, triumphant. Go have an amazing month of May. Thank you for joining me.